Welcome. In this session, we'll linearize a nonlinear least squares problem so that we can derive two algorithms. One is the Gauss-Newton iteration, and the other is the Levenberg-Marquardt algorithm. Let's have an insight. So let's consider, let's consider that the optimization optimization for this w star so we're looking for a minimizer of the objective the optimization for this is an iteration and one of the useful results of one of the many useful results of numerical analysis is that when we have an iteration we can sometimes use an approximation inside the iteration so we can try an approximation of each of these model functions that has the same vector argument. So what I'm saying is that we could approximate this and one of the ways that we could do it is we could use a truncated Taylor series. So we could say that this value is approximately, let's take this and let's expand it around some fixed value. So let's say it's some w0. And then we would add the gradient one form of the function at this w0 times the vector argument minus the expansion point. And when we take this one form times this vector, we get a scalar. This is a scalar. Things will work out. So this will give us an approximation. So then let's suppose we, now that we've approximated the model, let's approximate the residual error. So we'll approximate residual error. as we'll say that let's call this q sub i that has the vector argument and let's define this as being this model value minus the reading so that would be g i minus y i and let's expand this out and we can then say that that is g i at some particular expansion value plus the gradient one form of the ith model evaluated at that expansion point times the argument minus the expansion point and then we subtract the reading for that model and this then allows us to have a new objective and that the objective of the approximation. So this is not the objective that we had in the previous session. This is the objective of the approximation. Now we'll use a lowercase f and we will define this as being the residual error of this approximate of this approximated value at the argument squared this now lets us get the gauss newton derivation so the so we will abbreviate let's let's put those abbreviations over here Let's abbreviate, and this is only so that 
it's a little more convenient for us when we're writing. Let's say that j sub k we will, for this session, define as the Jacobian of the original models G evaluated at our kth estimate of the minimizer. And we'll abbreviate the true residual at the true residual vector at k. And we will define that for this session as being the residual vector when we compute it at the kth estimate of the minimizer. So the Gauss-Newton method, Gauss-Newton algorithm, is steepest descent, so steepest descent for and this is for the lowercase f, that is, for the objective of the approximation. And the, this iteration is wk plus 1, so the k plus 1 estimate is the kth estimate, plus this is the kth Jacobian, Jacobian transpose times the j the kth Jacobian inverse times the kth Jacobian transpose times the residual error at the kth iteration. Let's make a brief observation here. This is by construction a symmetric matrix. And if the Jacobian is full rank, then this is a symmetric positive definite matrix. If the Jacobian is not full rank, this may be a symmetric positive semi-definite matrix. So if it's po symmetric positive semi-definite, then it's not invertible. The rank of this depends in a complicated way on the behavior of the fun of the models, G, at some particular point. This difficulty was observed by Levenberg in 1944 and was solved in matrix form by Marquardt in 1963. Part of the delay was that Levenberg was working under a United States um, military contract and 1944 was during the Second World War. So there are shortcomings to this and that is um, so di let's call them difficulties or challenges. Difficulties are um, poor convergence for uh, W1, let's call it far from the actual minimizer. And we saw, we saw previously what can happen if we're a little too far away. And as we just observed, we can have a rank deficient J Jacobian. So at iteration k, this Jacobian might be, um, might be rank deficient. The Levenberg Marquardt algorithm is an elegant solution to this. And the solution is we'll damp this, damp with a value that is usually written as the Greek letter lambda that is greater than or equal to zero. And the levenberg marquardt algorithm is, it looks very, very similar, but it has a very different behavior numerically. This is the k plus 1 estimate of the minimizer is the kth estimate of the minimizer 
plus we take the kth Jacobian, transpose it, multiply it by the kth Jacobian, and we have the transpose of the Jacobian times the residual computed at iteration k. This, that is to say, almost all of the Gauss-Newton algorithm is part of the levenberg marquardt algorithm. And what they do is they add a value of lambda times the identity matrix. And when they do that, if you drive lambda up to infinity, this is dominated by just a steepest descent, uh, a scale, uh, a steepest descent with a step size. If lambda is zero, this is the Gauss-Newton iteration. And so what we can do is we could, for example, use a very large amount of lambda, get to a local estimate, and then drop that lambda until we get down to a closer estimate of the true minimizer. So this result, the Levenberg-Marquardt algorithm, is widely used in data analysis.